Mm -hmm. That is definitely a flounder. Yeah, there we go. That's what we're here for. It's Greg here with Outdoors on the Cheap and I'm out here for just about an hour this morning doing some flounder fishing. I uh, had a chance to get away so uh, I thought I'd get at it. I'll show you what I'm doing here. Hopefully we'll have some success. It's about 6 a.m. It's a good time if you got the tide right. I'll talk more about that as we go. This is a great way to catch a few fish uh, that you normally need a boat to catch but you can just catch it from a pier or even from the shore depending on where you are. You got to be in the right kind of spot. Uh, anyway, let's get geared up and get going here. All right, this is the rig I'm working with. We've got a, a swivel here. Go down, we've got a bit of a, a hook coming off the coming off the main line. It's called a pattern oster rig. I've actually um, done a video on how to uh, tie these up. Don't buy these things. Don't buy rigs. Tie them yourself. <laughs> Learn how to tie them yourself. It's a great thing to do when you're sitting in front of the TV instead of eating chips. <laughs> uh, and i got a weight here. I read somewhere, some guy said that if you paint the weights yellow, the flounder like that. I don't know if that's true, but uh, it, I've caught flounder with this yellow weight. But that's not, <laughs> that's hardly scientific. <laughs> uh, I'd have to do a pretty good experiment to figure that out. Uh, today for bait, I'm using, uh, let me get this in the camera here. I'm using shrimp. This is just like the cheapest shrimp I could get at the grocery store. I cut them in half lengthwise. I'm going to hook about, I don't know, it's about like the, just over an inch long, inch and a quarter long. Really small hook. I like a small hook for flounder. There's, you know, some of the, if you go to a fishing store, they'll have these big hooks called Carlisle hooks. Uh, I mean, they're handy because you can put a whole clam on one of those. And I should just say, in my opinion, the best way to fish flounder is from a boat <laughs> uh, in the right spot. It's, it's more, I had my son fishing with me yesterday. And, uh, you know, I'd forgotten because he's, he's new to all this, um, just how, how tricky it is to fish when you're not just dangling a line straight down. There's so many more things to, to think about when you're fishing, sort of casting out into the deep because you're, the line's sort of running along the bottom and there's just so much more risk of getting hooked up on the bottom and stuff like that. It's a lot that can go wrong. Uh, anyway, crank this out. You can put two hooks on a rig, right? But if you've got two hooks, if you're playing a fish, there's a risk of one of those hooks grabbing onto some seaweed or grabbing onto a rock and you losing the fish or maybe even the whole rig, right? So um, two hooks is better because you get, you know, more chance of more food out there for the fish. Uh, but <laughs> there's also the chance of uh, losing the whole thing. So I just stick with one. It's more reliable. I'm going to crank this out about as far as I can get it. So I got about, I got an eight foot surf rod here. Like eight, maybe nine. I gave that a good cast. I'd say that went like half a football field, give or take. Now I'm just letting it down to the bottom. So I cast it out far because it's not that deep here. And if you just fish next to the pier, you just catch... Uh, you'll just catch perch and sort of junk fish like that. Um, you're fishing off a pier. I know some of you that live like inland or not near the ocean. Uh, when you're freshwater fishing, perch is a, a nice fish. But in the ocean off a pier, perch is just sort of considered a, a junk fish. <laughs> you don't want it. And uh, also off a pier, most of the perch, they're tiny. They're like four or five inches long. And then just pick your bait clean and uh, you won't catch anything. Even if there is, I'm sure there's flounder down there, um, but it's almost impossible to catch them <laughs> because the, the sort of wharf fish just pick the line clean. Now at this spot, there's flounder, there's, there's perch, there's sculpins, there's pollock. And uh, when they're in, there's mackerel as well. And a lot of guys come to this pier to fish for mackerel. Um, now, I tend to come here to fish for flounder. I usually have a, a rod rigged up for mackerel. And because what happens when people are mackerel fishing is they'll, they'll cast like a hundred times 
and somewhere in those hundred casts will be the right it'll be the right time when there's a school nearby and uh, for about five minutes uh, you know, everyone's catching mackerel crazy like crazy and then that five minutes is over and then another half an hour goes by and there's no mackerel uh, so I found it more productive to fish for mackerel in places where you can fish for flounder and uh, you know just have your mackerel rod ready <laughs> When all the other guys start catching mackerel, you drop everything and start, you know, casting madly. Uh, <laughs> and I let them let them do all the work. <laughs> all right, so I got my line out there, and it, see all the, I don't know how well it comes across on camera, but it's nice and straight. So that's the best way to, you can't have it slack like that, right? It's got to be straight and tight, right? With a little, little slight bend in the end of your rod, and that's how you can detect bites, because the, the flounder bite is extremely... Uh, uh, soft, you know, it's very, you know, sometimes they hit it hard, but sometimes it's a very, very subtle take up. And there's various ways you can, you know, you can rest your rod on something to keep it nice and still. Let's see, let's see, I got a setting on the wharf piling there, right? Um, but uh, that keeps it nice and still and just takes a little bit of the work off your arm, right? And the longer, the more length you have, the better as well. I don't know if I just felt something there. And depending on what kind of bait you're using, you know, a soft bait, um, you might only get two or three bites before the bait's gone. So you really do have to pay attention. I mean, I, you can fish flounder putting your rod in a rod holder, um, but you'll catch more if you're, if you're actively hanging on to the rod and monitoring the situation. Another thing to do, you know, really, I'm fishing in the morning because... My understanding is that flounder are sight predators, and uh, they basically don't eat at night. That's what I've read. Uh, I don't know if that's true or not, but that's what I've read. So, basically, they haven't eaten for 12 hours, <laughs> give or take. So, I figure in the morning they're pretty hungry, right? So, they're out there looking for food. I, I imagine they're hunting, and the tide's right. That's the other thing. So, right now, the tide is... Uh, uh, on its way down. Okay, so it was, it, I think it was high tide at like, um, oh, 4, maybe 5 a.m., and now it's around 6 a.m., so the tide's moving, right? So I find about an hour, you know, an hour after high, so an hour after high for, you know, those two hours, right? If it, so it was high tide at 5 a.m., so from 6 to 7 to 8, it would be pretty good. Right. And like, likewise on the other way around. So when the tides, uh, I thought I felt something there. When the tides uh, coming up, if you're, you know, four hours before high tide, right? The three of those, because <laughs> the last hour close to high tide, things sort of slow down, and, and right around high tide, things just slow down. I mean, these are all general rules. You can catch fish at high tide. You can catch fish anytime, right? But I'm just talking about high probability. Right, so if you have that situation where the tide's coming down from high or the tide's going up towards high and it's sunrise, right, that's optimal uh, for flounder, in my opinion, in my experience, right? This other thing I'm doing every once in a while, I mean, I, I actually did pull, I think I had a bite there for a second there, but maybe not. Um, anyway, if you've cast to the right spot where there's flounder actually looking for fish, they will bite quickly like in a couple minutes so if you don't get a bite in a couple minutes pick your line up and let it drop i think it's called bumping so basically you're, you're picking the you're picking the, the weight up and then it drops down on the ground bump right and it's like saying to the flounder hey look there's something over here come check this out and it might this might be good for you right um so if you do that um sometimes that can change things up but don't just leave it in one place, right? Every couple minutes, try a, you know, a little bump like that. You just just give it a yank, reel some of the line in. You know, move it about 10, 10 feet. Oh, there's one. Yeah, he's on. Something's on. I don't know what it is. I think something's on. Whatever it is, is small. If there's anything on at all, it's small. Oh, 
can't remember what I was talking about there. You can see it was out of ways. Yep. Oh, it's a sculpin. <laughs> Evil looking little things. This is not what I'm after. No interest in keeping this guy. So these are incredibly tough bottom feeding fish with horns and spikes and they're basically built for uh, uh, survival. Yeah, nasty looking little guy. All right, and they can get quite large. They can get about a foot long or more. Anyway, let him go. He didn't take my bait, so I'll send that out again. Uh, some people, if you're a regular viewer, you may have noticed I haven't put any videos out for a while. It's just because this time of year, most of what I'm doing is fishing. And, uh, when I go fishing, I, I tend to invite someone with me. Either, uh, usually, the number one is I try to get one of my kids to come. And if neither of them wants to go, <laughs> I'll invite a buddy and bring some beer. <laughs> right? Um, so, you know, when that's, when that's the case, I'm not filming YouTube videos because I want to give my my kids or my friends or whatever my my full attention right so uh so i can't film when that's the case um so that basically every time i've gone fishing i've either been with uh you know i have a full-time job so i usually i can only go fishing about once a week and this is a unique situation because I'm, I'm working from home today and uh, i have an office job so sometimes i can work from home so uh i start work at eight and so I thought I could get out to this pier and fix uh, fish from 6 a.m. to uh, about 7 a.m. And I'll still be home in time to have breakfast and get a shower and get all set up. Because um, this place is only about 10 minutes from my house. <laughs> 10 minute drive. Um, so it, it's doable, right? So, yeah. But anyway, that, that's why I haven't been making videos lately. Because I've, I've, I've been doing perfect stuff for uh, video content but i've had someone with me all the time and uh and you know i just don't i don't feel it's fair to uh to make the fishing trip about about my channel it should be about you know uh having a good time with a buddy or you know being with my kids uh weird thing was yesterday when i, I was here with my son yesterday morning and we had we had a pretty good day we got i got four he had one and lost it <laughs> he's still learning um anyway when we got here, the minute we got here, uh, my son noticed uh, there was an otter swimming around the corner over there. And the otter had a uh, flounder in its mouth, a sea otter. <laughs> it's just swimming around the corner. Uh, and a good size flounder. So, uh, yeah, I said, uh, I think we're in the right place. <laughs> I, think we're, I think we're in the right place at the right time, which is 95% of fishing. <laughs> Uh, anyway, I'm going to kill the camera and I'll turn it back on when I hook into something because I think I've just about exhausted my uh, ability to talk. <laughs> I'm going to drink some coffee. All right, so uh, we'll be back with you in a minute. Doesn't seem to be fighting like a flounder though. Well, I never know. <laughs> like flounders usually get a lot of head shakes, you know. That is definitely a flounder. Yeah, there we go. That's what we're here for. There we go. See what I mean? Like that's not a huge, that's not a huge flounder. Like no. that's it's still worth keeping, but <laughs> still gonna keep it. But there we go. It's good. That's what it was like yesterday. I'd take a cast, and basically they hit almost as soon as it landed on bottom. You can't ask for much better than that. You ain't gonna be here much longer if this keeps up. <laughs> That's why I switched to this, you know, like, it's, so normally I got my my uh, macro gear nearby, and if, if the guy, other guys are catching mackerel, I'll grab my rod and start casting, because I know they're here. <laughs> I've done macro fishing with a bobber, eh? Oh, yeah. Yeah, like you put a little tiny pit, you have a small hook, 
and like a little bit of shrimp or something like that something white a white bait and you just crank it out as far as you can crank it then you just sit down and relax yeah and you see the bobber go under uh, you got a mackerel going <laughs> So a whole camera crew showed up and I had this other guy next to me fishing and stuff like that and I just felt awkward uh, talking to my camera while all that was going on. Also, it was a bit of a distraction with all the, the noise of the guys gearing up. Well, they're scoping. Uh, so uh, I thought I'd just, uh, just, I kept recording, but I thought I'd do a voiceover for uh, the remainder of the video because there was, there was like 10 guys on the pier with trucks and gear and diving gear and camera equipment and all kinds of stuff. Anyway, this is, a, uh, I guess, sculpin. Uh, number two, I thought I'd get him in close. This guy had a, a whole crab in his mouth, <laughs> so I thought I'd show that and just give people a sense of how to get one of these off a hook because it's hard to figure out how to grab them, right? There's different ways to do it, but the way I'm holding them uh, can work, right? Uh, just the underside is this thing got spikes all over. Uh, the top is covered in spikes, right? So they're very well protected, well armored fish. They certainly know what they're doing. Anyway, I thought I could pull this crab out and <laughs> show you. <laughs> crab, right? Uh, anyway, that crab was dead. <laughs> uh, that's, just, that's the sculpin. I mean, you're, you're going to catch those. It's just going to, if you're fishing off bottom, you're going to get sculpin sometimes. It just happens. Um, this was, uh, I think, the second flounder I caught. Uh, this one was not big at all. No, uh, no challenge to play them out. Um, you know, there's just different sizes flounder. The ones I caught today on this trip were not uh, not monsters by any stretch of the imagination. I've gone flounder fishing and caught them twice this size and even larger. Uh, so, you know, I mean, they're all they all taste good in the fry pan. I'll tell you that. But uh, yeah, this one not a monster by any stretch of the imagination. But I can still get some bullets off one of those. Um, and uh, I think this is the last fish I caught on that, that little trip because it was time to pack up and go and just uh, you know uh, get on with uh, get on with my day because this was a <laughs> this was a work day I was just sneaking out to get a little fish in and before uh, before it started uh, this here was a perch uh, I think they're called uh, cunners as well I don't know how they got that name although uh, I have my suspicions but the <laughs> c-u-n-n-e-r you can google that that's one of the main names for the sea perch um, anyway, these are the sort of things uh, any kid that grew up near a pier, the fish in the ocean would have caught. They got spikes all over their their, their, their dorsal fin there, and they got nasty looking little teeth, right? Um, anyway, uh, you drop any kind of meat off a pier, they're going to get it. So there's a two flounder I got uh, for that trip. Um, no monsters, but man, what a what a great way to start my day. Hey there, I couldn't wrap up uh, on the pier because uh, a whole camera crew showed up. Uh, they were going to film a dive on a, a semi-famous wreck, uh, you know, like a ship that sank. So it was just uh, too much going on there to, you know, too much noise and all that sort of stuff to, uh, to try to talk over it. It would have been uh, irritating and, uh, I, you know, it would have been a cool thing for me to film these guys setting up, but it, it, it didn't seem like they had in, any interest in me doing that. <laughs> I didn't even ask. <laughs> right. Um, and it was for some TV show, uh, but they didn't even, the, the TV show, it doesn't even have a name yet. Some TV show where they're diving on wrecks uh, that will be on some TV channel at some point in time. <laughs> That's what they told me. <laughs> anyway, because of that, I couldn't uh, film the... Uh, the completion of the video so here I am uh, you know just uh, wrapping the video up as I, as I drive home uh, it was a good little fishing trip uh, you know I, I didn't have a lot of time so I only got two uh, I was a bit distracted by everything being set up by those guys so I was you know I started losing bait <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I clearly was distracted because I just wasn't uh, noticing little subtle bites and stuff like that so I just wasn't dialed in uh, when you're fishing for flounder from shore anyway off a boat it's a bit easier but from shore um, you know all things being equal uh, you have to kind of be focused on what you're doing uh, I mean sometimes they just catch themselves but that's not always the case you have to be focused on what you're doing um, so you can detect the subtle bites and that sort of stuff. Also, there was just other things there. There's crabs there. There's sculpins. There's uh, 
uh, even little perch, right? I mean, all those things are around, and there's flounder, so you never know what's what's at your bait. Um, so I caught two. That's not enough for uh, you know for my family. I find four of that size, the ones I was catching. Uh, bigger ones, maybe you could get get away with three. Uh, but for for me, I got two adults and two basically like teenagers, um, eleven year old and a thirteen year old. But the eleven year old is the size of a fourteen year old. <laughs> um, yeah, you need about four four flounder for a good uh, good meal. Uh, so we didn't quite get there today, but uh, I don't know. It doesn't matter. It's a good good way to start the day. Uh, better than sitting around the house. So uh, I hope you found that video interesting. If you did, please like, share, subscribe, and until next time, enjoy the outdoors on the cheap. Thanks for watching. <laughs>